Hi everyone and welcome to my new YouTube channel. My name is Emily and just to quickly sort of slightly introduce myself before I get fully into the video. I'm 23 years old, I've just moved to London from Cardiff, I moved on my own. Um, it's pretty scary but we're sort of we're getting there. Um, and instead of doing um, a sort of slightly boring answering just sort of generic small talk questions, um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, a little bit Emily esque, um, and just to give a bit of background. So I am single at the moment, very single. There is a point to this story, and there is an app called Hinge. Now, if anyone who isn't single or doesn't do the whole dating app thing. Hinge is an app where you answer questions and they're a little bit out of the box or your answers can be a little bit out of the box. So I thought, oh, this is a really good way of getting to know someone and to sort of slightly quirkily, I don't think that's the word, but quirkily, um, introduce myself. So without further ado, let's get into answering some of these questions. Now, I did answer a few questions um, for my first vlog, but I realized that you could hear the washing machine in the other room throughout the whole thing. So I thought I'd sort of redo it, redo this vlog because I wanted it to be perfect for all of you. Um, so the question, I'm gonna answer different questions so you fully get like, a non thought through answer so I'm gonna do completely different questions um, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it now if you do enjoy my video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of these videos they'll be totally different ones I'm not quite sure um, what I'll be doing in the next vid few videos but if you like this one then let me know and subscribe because there will be a lot more videos for you to get into now, I said let's get into it, let's get into it now. So, um, first question, so I've got the app up here and you just swipe through and there's loads of different questions. So I'm literally just gonna work my way through them um, and see what comes out. I mean, it could go anywhere. So let's hope <laughs> that it goes well. So first question, the award I should be nominated for, um, probably, the most competitive not Monopoly player. I mean, honestly, when they say that that game breaks families, my family had many an argument over Monopoly. I'm pretty sure my sister didn't talk to me for like two weeks because I made her play Monopoly with me over the school holidays. But, you know, if you enjoy a game, why not? Um, I'm weirdly attracted to guys in suits. I think that's a pretty normal one, but I love a guy in a suit, what's not to love? I'm also weirdly attracted to, like if I meet a guy or something, I'll look at their watch. Not for like money reasons, but just because I can really appreciate a good watch. I went watch shopping with my dad for his 25th wedding anniversary, and since then I just keep looking at people's watches, it's really weird. Um, ideal first date. Um, so I got taken to an aquarium on a first date, which sounds really weird, but I'm a massive fish nerd. He didn't know this at the time, but obviously absolutely loved it. Like went to this aquarium and all my geeky fish knowledge came out and I just started sort of like rattling off this fax and I think he thought it was a bit strange. But we did end up together, so I mean, fish knowledge must work. I'll throw a few facts out there. I feel like you now want to know a few facts about fish. You may not, but we're going to go for it. So there are over 30,000 species of fish. Um, the lionfish, so the, the fish with like loads of different tentacles, it's like brown and white. Everyone thinks it's poisonous, but it's not poisonous, it's feminous. Feminous? Yeah, that's it. Feminous. So um, if you, so poisonous is like, it has to go through your digestive system, I think. I could get this totally wrong, 
but you can eat the flesh of a lionfish so if you cooked it you could eat it so it's venomous not poison no poisonous not venomous um and the oldest fish is 86 years old there you go use that one in a pub quiz um my ideal fake sick day not oh no it's fake I was about to say not being sick. Nice one, Emily. My ideal fake sick day. Um, probably just like a day in bed. I really enjoy a day in bed. I don't normally do it that often. I mean, I say that. I probably do it more often than quite a lot of people. But I love my bed. I love a Netflix day. And I, don't, I never feel, like, I don't really massively feel guilty for it, which is really nice. Um, my most irrational fear, <sighs> I'm absolutely terrified of caterpillars, like, <laughs> like they are horrible, like, they shouldn't be a thing, they shouldn't, I mean obviously they turn into butterflies which are really nice, but, oh no I don't want to talk about it anymore, let's stop talking about it. I recently discovered that there is more sugar pound for pound in a lemon than a strawberry. Blew my mind. Honestly. The last time I cried, probably like yesterday. <laughs> I am a bit of a big crier. Not because I... I don't know. No, I probably am a bit overly emotional. Um, sorry if you can see, hear that aeroplane. I've got my window open because it's really hot in here. But um, yeah, I am. I am quite an emotional person. But um, since moving to London, I um, probably don't enjoy my job as much as I thought I would so I was just really lucky in my job in Cardiff and everyone really really got on with each other it was like really strange we were like a dysfunctional family um and I really miss that actually like really miss having that kind of friendship with work colleagues and and I wouldn't even say a couple of them are work colleagues anymore like I still talk to them since moving to London and actually one of them moved up to, moved up to London a week before me so that's really nice having her here um one thing I'll never do again um eating avocado I hate avocado it's horrible I'm overly competitive about Monopoly. Pretty much everything, to be fair. I mean, I wouldn't say, like, overly competitive to the point where, like, I cause arguments and, like, want to strangle someone, but I am pretty competitive. Um, pet peeves. Littering. I absolutely detest people that litter like there's no need for it there's a bin probably around most corners these days so just literally hold on to it for a few seconds there's just no need um oh i have a gym one when you're using a piece of equipment but like obviously not using it at that time stood next to it and someone just waltzes in and starts using it without even asking you whether you were using it I mean, I'm stood right there. Common gym etiquette is to just be like, oh, are you using this? And if I am, more often than not, I'll be like, jump in when I'm not using it because I don't want to be that person that just like hogs all the equipment even when I'm having a rest in between sets. Not about that. Um, other pet peeves. I don't think I have that many not saying like please and thank yous that really annoys me or correct grammar that on uh, spelling the spell the correct spelling of your probably annoys me a little bit more than it should um the hallmark of a good relationship is i mean <laughs> i didn't have a great one i've not just come out about a year ago 
um, came out of what I thought was a really good relationship. Um, but a lot has come out since. Um, and only actually recently, so like three months ago. Um, but what I, I would say one thing that was good about our relationship was that we were really open with each other. I was about to say really open with each other. I mean, he cheated on me four times and didn't tell me, so probably wasn't that open with me, but <laughs> got to laugh at it. Um, I, I thought we were quite open at the time. Like, if we had an issue with each other, we would just sit each other down and just talk it through. And I think the good thing about us was that we understood that the other person wasn't saying something to be horrible or hurt the other person they were saying it because they wanted to be honest and i and and be truthful and actually keeping that to yourself in a relationship is really unhealthy and i understood that every time he told me oh emily you're not doing this or you're doing this and it's really annoying me I knew he wasn't trying to hurt me, so I never took it to offence. Obviously, it's hard to hear that you're doing something wrong, but it's better to know that you're doing something wrong and never do it again than to keep doing it. Um, so I think that's really... And, like, just com like communication in general, being honest about most things. Um, it could go a little bit deeper than that, but I think we'll keep we'll keep the deep level at that for this video we'll go we can go deeper in pr next videos if you want to weirdest gifts i've ever received i've given or received um i just gave my sister literally the title of the book was how to run, run a do doggy daycare because she wants to open a doggy daycare um but she um is a nurse at the moment so she's an a and e and trauma nurse um so her degree was in nursing my degree was in business i've got a business management degree so she doesn't really know anything about starting or running a business i mean obviously she's looking into it but i bought her that and a how to run how to start a business for dummies because i'm such a nice sister <laughs> so i'd say that was pretty weird um worst idea i've ever had I mean, this could be the worst idea I've ever had. This could go terribly, but I'm hoping that it doesn't. Um, probably just really generic, like, um, cutting my hair short when it was really long. I think that was probably quite bad. Um, yeah, because I knew I wouldn't like it, and I didn't like it the next day. So it was like, great one, Emily. What have you achieved from that? Um, my last meal would be, see I always think with these ones um, that I, I'd have so much and there's so much that I want but you get I get full really easily so I feel like with your last meal I'd want to like not ever get full from it so if that was the case I'd have like chicken nuggets, chicken burger, chips maybe onion rings I mean I could go on but I'll stop there um, and then probably for dessert like frozen yogurt and cookie dough warm warm cookie dough mm. yum um, stop it I've got really hungry now unusual skills I'm really good at catching balls that sounds wrong but I'm actually really good at catching stuff. I'll say stuff instead of balls. Um, and I can open a bottle of champagne with a knife. Um, so my dad's in the army, so naturally, obviously, um, I got taught to open a bottle of champagne with a knife. Actually, to be fair, I got taught with a sword. So I can actually open it with a sword, because, you know, can't most people do that? Is that not a normal thing? <laughs> Never have I ever been to Wagamama's and Sub- oh no I've been to Subway now. One of my good friends from Cardiff took me to Subway because I went in there um, 
and wanted to like peruse the menu but got too stressed out because it was lunchtime and there was a massive queue and I felt like I couldn't do it so I walked out and got a bit scarred and never wanted to go back so my friend basically dragged me into Subway and was like you need to experience it it was actually awful I probably wouldn't go back so but you know some people love Subway good for you um, I actually I have found a sandwich shop but it's like a local one in Cardiff that makes the most amazing tuna mayonnaise baguette. Um, worst fad I participated in. Ooh. Probably like Scooby-Doo's at school. Or Tamagotchi's. I had Tamagotchi's. Um, I don't know whether this is a worst fad because I actually really liked it. But... Um, Nintendo DS, if anyone had a Nintendo DS, I did, had a grey one. Um, and I had Nintendogs, best game ever invented. Who wouldn't want a, what's it called? A virtual dog. I mean, you don't have to get up in the rain and walk the dog. You just have to do it on the DS. Amazing game, brilliant. My greatest strengths. This could get quite deep, actually. Um, no, let's go deep. Why not? So I think my greatest strength, at the moment anyway, is I think quite early on, or earlier than most people, I've sort of learnt a lot of things that take other people until sort of later life to discover. So sort of that you're not going to be friends with anyone everyone and not everyone's going to like you and and actually you really don't need to take that to heart there are literally like how many people on earth like seven billion or something ridiculous like that and you know a lot of those people aren't going to get on with you and actually you grow so much during your life that people that you've got on well with for years and you might suddenly start to not really get on with them or or sort of start to grow apart that is genuinely life like you've grown into a completely different person than you were a couple of years ago or you might have gone through something in life that has sort of changed your perspective or changed how you act around people or changed how you act to people and you know some sometimes people might go through something and they and they might not you know they might start acting a bit horribly but you don't know what's going through that person's head at that moment in time and actually they might be totally unaware of it um sometimes i do think it you, at that moment in time you do need to be there for that person more than ever because they're obviously really struggling but i think there's a difference between needing to be there for someone because they're really struggling or just that you've you've grown apart and you know I in particular I'm, I'm a massive people pleaser so what I really struggle when I think people don't like me or or I'm not really getting on with a lot of people because it is hard to think oh these people don't like me it's it's not a nice feeling but it's understanding that the next person that comes along could really like you or could really get on with you and you know you can't please everyone and also sort of another thing is I've learned to really love the way that I look and understand that I'm not perfect I know I'm not the prettiest I know I'm not the fittest person in the world sort of athletically no aesthetically um I know that I'm not the prettiest I know you know I've got wobbly bits I've got cellulite totally normal by the way it really frustrates me that there's this whole like how do I get rid of cellulite well some people have more than others and you know you could eat an apple a day and still have cellulite like I think I've learnt to love my wobbly bits and you know everyone is so beautiful in their own way regardless of whether you know you, you could be a person that really struggles to put on weight or you could be a person that really struggles to lose weight and both those both those people I think sometimes have 
the same issues where you know you've got people sort of fat shaming on Instagram and stuff like that but then you've also got people commenting on on people that struggle to put on weights photos saying you're too skinny like blah 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 I think it can go both ways and and I think everyone just needs to understand that they're so beautiful in their own way and I think it's a really big life lesson to learn to love yourself I think it's really hard I'm still learning to love myself and will do for the rest of my life I think you know it it gets easier but it's a really really hard thing to do should we go take it back down to typical Sunday <laughs> change the topic um oh, we'll just kick the camera there um my typical Sunday is it is quite lazy and it is quite boring to some people but I love it so I'll wake up obviously naturally at the moment my natural but like my natural wake up time is literally eight o'clock in the morning because my body decides that it doesn't want to give me a light in don't know why um so i wake up really slowly put the telly on i've got a telly in my bedroom so i'll just watch a bit of telly and um, really slowly have breakfast and then probably go to the gym the gym for me is is becoming not a chore so it was at one point and i think everyone who goes through a fitness journey no matter where you are in the journey will eventually come to a point where it becomes a bit of a chore and this could be a couple of days a couple of weeks a couple of months a couple of years but it was a massive chore for me probably a few months ago um, and it's only just sort of as I'm getting into the routine of London that I'm really learning to love it again and I think um, I'm going out less because I sort of obviously know less people in London <coughs> so I think going out less has obviously made me notice sort of changes a lot more and I think I'm just learning to really love it again so it's not sure so I would do that on a Sunday um, come back, probably eat a bit of lunch, have a shower obviously because I don't want to be stinky um, and then probably have a nap. I would say I actively plan naps on a Sunday or a Saturday, you know, mix it up. Um, my simple pleasures, um, doing laundry, I absolutely love doing laundry i will literally do about six loads a week i absolutely love it i don't know why don't ask me why um but i literally love it i think this i think clean sheets is probably quite a normal one everyone loves getting into a a bed with clean sheets on um a good squash so no one really has ever made me a good enough squash so this is what squash should look like none of this flavoured water business I mean squash is obviously flavoured water but I mean when it literally looks a little bit cloudy water that's not acceptable that, sh that should not happen um, uh, probably a good candle so I've got this one it's from Home Bargains um, it's literally like three pounds. Smells absolutely incredible. Um, it is a Christmas one, but I literally love Christmas scents, so I have them all year round. I don't know whether that's weird, but I don't know whether you can see the name. But it's called Gingerbread, um, and like I said, it's literally like three pounds. I'll stock up with them for the year, and I'll literally buy like seven and I'll just constantly burn through them. I'm not allowed them anywhere else in the house because um, I live with four boys and they don't like the smell of it so I'm not allowed it but my room pretty much smells like gingerbread constantly. Um, I think that's probably about it. Um, on my bucket list, probably like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Um, the never eat, shall we? west coast of america yep i just did that 
Um, so when I was younger, I lived on the east coast of America. Um, so my dad's in the army, like I mentioned. So he was posted out there in Virginia. So we lived out there, but we never did the west coast. So I think I'd love to do the west coast of America. And it's pretty much just like travelling ones like that. I don't, I haven't got any bore, not boring, opposite of boring. I haven't got any like extreme ones like skydiving and stuff like that. Like, absolutely not. I have no desire to jump out of a plane anytime soon. Um, I geek out on fish. I don't think I geek out on anything else. I mean, I geek out a little bit about space, but it does freak me out at the same time. So I like read about it, be really interested in it. Um, but then at the same time, get really freaked out. <laughs> a life goal of mine is probably this. I think this comes under the umbrella of sort of a life goal of mine is to just constantly push myself out of my comfort zone. I don't think it immediately comes naturally to me whether that's it immediately comes naturally to a lot of people I don't know but for me it, it's it's really difficult for me to push myself out of my comfort zone and this is massively pushing myself out of my comfort zone and I've been putting it off for literally years I've wanted to do this for years um and I don't know why I started to do it I don't like I don't know what clicked in my brain, but I think since moving to London, I've massively started pushing myself out of my comfort zone. So like I organized a meetup for 14 girls who do the Grace Fit Guide. Um, if you don't know what that is, then there is a girl called Grace Fit UK on Instagram and she also does YouTube as well, but she has created a guide. Um, and there's a really, really lovely online community um, Facebook group for any girl that does the guide um, and I posted in that group basically admitting that I didn't have any friends in London and I think that's for a lot of people a really scary thing to do a lot of people aren't willing to sort of admit that they're they they you know they're missing a social life or that they don't have that many people to connect to in their local area or you know, it can be a multitude of reasons why that person at that moment in time might not have the social life that they want. So for me, that was moving to London, not knowing anyone. And I, and I think putting on Facebook and almost admitting that you don't have any friends is a really scary thing to do. But I, I think there's this sort of misconception that it's, it's an embarrassing thing to say or or you know people would judge them or think that they're a horrible person and it is by no means that like posting that on Facebook does not mean any of those things it just means that in that moment in in time you want to have some friends and I think for me I, I've really not struggled to make friends because I haven't I, I'm a really social person I will literally talk to a dustbin but I've just unfortunately gone through life and just been surrounded by the people that are, were wrong for me so at school they were absolutely lovely girls and and they are absolutely lovely girls and they're achieving so much in life but I grew a lot and I changed a lot and I think I just grew away from those girls and you know I, I will never ever speak horribly of them because they're not horrible people they were just not my people um and then uni you know again it's luck of who you get put in halls with or who you're on courses with and I you know didn't particularly get on massively with with anyone at uni so I think moving to London, obviously, again, not knowing anyone, um, I, I had to admit it all over again. Um, but yeah, a life goal of mine is is definitely pushing myself out of my comfort zone and, and hopefully um, this will go well, this little venture, because um, it could go horribly wrong. But um, 
no one has ever looked back on an idea that's failed and and regretted trying it so here I am trying it um most spontaneous thing I've done probably um got a tattoo the same day I decided to get one so I've got four tattoos um I love three of them um the fourth one I would love um it just wasn't done very well and didn't heal very well um so there is the a potential sort of getting rid of that one and getting something else. Um, I don't regret being spontaneous and like th like I said this YouTube idea is pretty spontaneous. It literally came into my head and I was like no I'm gonna do it and that day went out and bought a camera and and everything and a tripod and whatever. Um, so I am a very spontaneous person anyway um, but my spontaneity is like next level. Um, so I think that there, there are a lot of things that I've done spontaneously, but they're probably the standout. Facts about me that surprises people. Um, I think the fact I went to boarding school is probably quite surprising to some people. Apparently I sound like I'm from Essex. So, not that that's a bad thing, but I think um, people have this perception of private school people um, and I don't think I fit that. Whether that's a compliment or a insult, I'm not really sure, but we'll go with it. Um, I'm not really sure, that's actually a really hard question. Um, I think actually sometimes people are surprised about my age. Again, don't know whether it's an insult or a compliment, but I'm, yeah, I'm 23 and I think people are quite surprised by that. Um, I go crazy for crisps. I'm absolutely obsessed with crisps. Probably favourite crisp has got to be a pickled onion monster munch I don't think anyone will want to kiss me afterwards but at the moment no one wants to kiss me anyway so <laughs> doesn't matter more crisps for me um I unwind I unwind by um probably having a really long shower the shower is my happy place I I, if I'm stressed, if I'm happy, if I'm sad, if I'm angry, I will go and have a shower. Um, it stemmed from quite a deep story, which I could potentially get into another time, but um, the shower is, yeah, a really calm place for me. So if I need to unwind, I will go in the shower. Uh, probably a good candle so I've got this one it's from Home Bargains um, it's literally like three pounds smells absolutely incredible um, it is a Christmas one but I literally love Christmas scents so I have them all year round I don't know whether that's weird but I don't know whether you can see the name but it's called gingerbread um, and like I said, it's literally like three pounds. I'll stock up with them for the year and I'll literally buy like seven and I'll just constantly burn through them. I'm not allowed them anywhere else in the house because um, I live with four boys and they don't like the smell of it. So I'm not allowed it, but my room pretty much smells like gingerbread constantly. Um, I think that's probably about it. Um, on my bucket list, Probably like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Um, the never eat every week. West Coast of America. Yep, I just did that. Um, so when I was younger, I lived on the East Coast of America. Um, so my dad's in the army, like I mentioned. So he was posted out there in Virginia. So we lived out there, but we never did the West Coast. So I think I'd love to do the West Coast of America. And it's pretty much just like travelling ones like that. I don't, I haven't got any bore, not boring, 
opposite of boring. I haven't got any like extreme ones like skydiving and stuff like that. Like absolutely not. I have no desire to jump out of a plane anytime soon. Um, I geek out on fish. I don't think I geek out on anything else. I mean, I geek out a little bit about space, but it does freak me out at the same time. So I'll like read about it, be really interested in it. Um, but then at the same time, get really freaked out. <laughs> a life goal of mine is probably this. I think this comes under the umbrella of sort of a life goal of mine is to just constantly push myself out of my comfort zone. I don't think it, immediately comes naturally to me whether that's it immediately comes naturally to a lot of people I don't know but for me it, it's it's really difficult for me to push myself out of my comfort zone and this is massively pushing myself out of my comfort zone and I've been putting off for literally years I've wanted to do this for years um and I don't know why I started to do it I don't like I don't know what clicked in my brain, but I think since moving to London, I've massively started pushing myself out of my comfort zone. So like I organized a meetup for 14 girls who do the Grace Fit Guide. Um, if you don't know what that is, then there is a girl called Grace Fit UK on Instagram and she also does YouTube as well, but she has created a guide. Um, and there's a really, really lovely online community um, Facebook group for any girl that does the guide um, and I posted in that group basically admitting that I didn't have any friends in London and I think that's for a lot of people a really scary thing to do a lot of people aren't willing to sort of admit that they're they they you know they're missing a social life or that they, they don't have that many people to connect to in their local area or you know, it can be a multitude of reasons why that person at that moment in time might not have the social life that they want. So for me, that was moving to London, not knowing anyone. And I, and I think putting on Facebook and almost admitting that you don't have any friends is a really scary thing to do. But I, I think there's this sort of misconception that it's, it's an embarrassing thing to say or or you know people would judge them or think that they're a horrible person and it is by no means that like posting that on Facebook does not mean any of those things it just means that in that moment in in time you want to have some friends and I think for me I, I've really not struggled to make friends because I haven't I, I'm a really social person I will literally talk to a dustbin but I've just unfortunately gone through life and just been surrounded by the people that are, were wrong for me so at school they were absolutely lovely girls and and they are absolutely lovely girls and they're achieving so much in life but I grew a lot and I changed a lot and I think I just grew away from those girls and you know I, I will never ever speak horribly of them because they're not horrible people they were just not my people um, and then uni you know again it's luck of who you get put in halls with or who you're on courses with and I you know didn't particularly get on massively with with anyone at uni so I think moving to London, obviously, again, not knowing anyone, um, I, I had to admit it all over again. Um, but yeah, a life goal of mine is, is definitely pushing myself out of my comfort zone and, and hopefully um, this will go well, this little venture, because um, it could go horribly wrong. But um, no one has ever looked back on an idea that's failed and i regretted trying it so here I am trying it um, most spontaneous thing I've done probably um, got a tattoo the same day I decided to get one so I've got four tattoos um, I love three of them 
Um, the fourth one I would love. Um, it just wasn't done very well and didn't heal very well. Um, so there is a, a potential sort of getting rid of that one and getting something else. Um, I don't regret being spontaneous and like th like I said this YouTube idea is pretty spontaneous. It literally came into my head and I was like no I'm going to do it. And that day went out and bought a camera and, and everything and a tripod and whatever. Um, so I am a very spontaneous person anyway um but my spontaneity is like next level um so i think that there are a lot of things that i've done spontaneously but they're probably the standout facts about me that surprises people um i think the fact i went to boarding school is probably quite surprising to some people apparently i sound like i'm from essex so, not that that's a bad thing, but I think um, people have this perception of private school people um, and I don't think I fit that. Whether that's a compliment or a insult, I'm not really sure, but we'll go with it. Um, I'm not really sure, that's actually a really hard question. Um, I think actually sometimes people are surprised about my age. Again, don't know whether it's an insult or a compliment, but I'm, yeah, I'm 23 and I think people are quite surprised by that. Um, I go crazy for crisps. I'm absolutely obsessed with crisps. Probably favourite crisp has got to be a pickled onion monster wrench. I don't think anyone will want to kiss me afterwards but at the moment no one wants to kiss me anyway so <laughs> doesn't matter. More crisps for me. Um, I, unwind, I unwind by um, probably having a really long shower. The shower is my happy place. I, I, if I'm stressed, if I'm happy, if I'm sad, if I'm angry, I will go and have a shower. Um, it stemmed from quite a deep story, which I could potentially get into another time, but um, the shower is, yeah, a really calm place for me. So if I need to unwind, I will go in the shower. Um... My most controversial opinion. I don't think I have any massively controversial opinions. Um, I What I'm about to say I don't think is actually very controversial. Um, but I, I don't agree that guys should be in any way thought less of if they don't pay on the first date. Um, I think quite a lot of girls will sort of think badly about the guy and I don't. I don't think that's very fair because um, if it was the other way around um, and a guy offered to pay you, girls probably would go like yeah let's go half so I don't think I don't think there's anything bad in that or if a guy pays for and I'm on a date for the first drink I would always get the second like I would literally insist on getting the second um, I also think like this potentially could be controversial but I also think with the whole like dating thing, I think a lot of people think that you owe each other something, so, which you do in a way, but I'll get into that, but if I'm on a date and I, I know that I have not clicked with that person, I will let them know. I'm not I'm not going to be horrible, I'm not going to be like, oh my god, no, but in an, in the nicest way, I will I will sort of say, like, I, I just don't think it's there, and, and that doesn't mean that they're a horrible person, that doesn't mean that they're not good looking, that doesn't mean any anything other than I have not felt a click with that person, 
and I think a lot of people will sort of just carry on going on a date for like three four hours even though they don't like that person and that to me is almost leading them on because if if a guy wasn't enjoying my company well it was enjoying my company but there wasn't a spark I'd want them to tell me um because that person is going to leave the date thinking oh my god that went really well um so I do think that not letting the person know on a date is potentially, like, it's a little bit like leading them on. Um, I mean, I'm not talking about like 20 minutes in, tell them, oh, no, sorry, this isn't for me. Maybe like an hour in. Um, because also, like, I don't want to waste their time. If they're really, you know, really, really wanting to find someone and they think that that's me, but I don't feel the same. Yeah. Um... My favourite game to play at parties, Heads Up, absolutely love Heads Up, I've got the Friends version as well, um, so in Heads Up you can get like packs, and I've got the Friends packs, but I haven't found anyone in London to play it with yet, because in Cardiff, I got it in Cardiff and my housemate at the time was absolutely obsessed with friends like me, I literally know it word for word. Um, so we were amazing at it and we just used to play it drunk and it was amazing. Um, the key to making me laugh is I have quite like a slapstick humour. So if people fall all over, I will literally like cry with laughter. It's really awful. Um, and I'm that person who like someone will fall over and like be crying, trying not to laugh. Um, and almost forget to ask them if they're alright. It's awful, but it, it, I just find it hilarious. Um, and also friend, like friends sort of humour and um, that's what makes me laugh. So I'm probably going to leave it there um, but I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, and getting to know a little bit more about me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the weird and wonderful questions that came out and um, obviously my hilarious answers. Um, like I asked at the start, if you did like it please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, that's absolutely fine. But if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment with feedback as to why, please be nice. Don't be horrible. This is my first one, so please bear with me. But any sort of feedback at this point will be really helpful um, for me determining what my future videos would be and how I can improve them for you. Um, again, there will be future videos, so please subscribe. Um, I'm It'll probably be once, one or two a week so um we are talking a lot of videos so i really hope you enjoyed it um yeah that's it from me but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye Yeah.